Adam, you've been working with commercial and non-commercial festivals. What do you think the lessons that these two sorts of festivals have to learn from one another? Well, I think the first thing they should learn is that they're actually very similar in their approach. And I think probably if you were to talk to what you might describe as subsidised or non-commercial festivals, they would say, we really don't want to get involved with uh, generating income and ticket sales because basically that's uh, undermining our artistic integrity and whatever. But actually, I'd like to um, rethink or recast this notion of commercial and non-commercial because I think it's actually more important to ask if a festival is independent, autonomous, or whether it's dependent or connected in some way to a market trend or a market imperative. Now, what I mean by that is that there are many, many festivals that are probably indeed only uh, selling tickets and want people to come in. Uh, I won't name them, but they, they are interesting nevertheless as uh, commercial entities and business propositions. But there are also a lot of festivals that choose not to sell tickets and do things for free. And that is important as well, because uh, we have to find ways of giving artists opportunities to meet as many different types of audiences as they possibly can. Now, the sector I work in the most, which is in music, um, what we've seen is something that happened in the 1980s and 90s with labels happening around festivals where basically they're being owned by or being consolidated under much larger concerns. So uh, large uh, entertainment concerns realise that there's no money in uh, selling records anymore, so the more the money is in live and they own the festival as an outlet. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but the question is how much does the agenda or the uh, business plan of the larger concern affect the artistic program of the festival? So the question is really how autonomous, not independent, autonomous um, festivals are, how, uh, how they're able to create their own artistic programs. And some choose to do that by taking money from a larger concern and other uh, festivals tend to take that from funding and from subsidy and offering events for free. If you were to ask me which one I would choose, I would say that I would go for the funded subsidised events because that is the way in which you cultivate an audience for the much larger uh, and more commercial um, outdoor music events and festivals around the country.